Hi everybody, Tex-Mex here. Thanks for joining me for another video. Uh, if I sound a little hoarse, it's because uh, I am a little hoarse, caught myself a chest cold, but that's not stopping me from coming out here to do a little shooting. Truth be told, this is right before New Year's. This is uh, the Friday coming up. I had the day off. Uh, normally my family and I come spend uh, the weekend of New Year's out on a property like this, shoot fireworks, sometimes I get some hunting done. But unfortunately for those of you that, with kids that know the joys of sports, in this case volleyball, volleyball stops for nobody. So I'm out here just for the day to do some shooting. I'm going to try to shoot a few videos to put up for the next month or so. Uh, so if I sound hoarse in the next uh, three or four videos I post up, uh, now you know why. Anyway, enough of me complaining. What we're doing out here today is we're going to shoot a 22 Magnum Henry lever action. Now this Henry I bought some time ago. Uh, I think the model number, and I'll put it up on the screen right now, I think it's the H. 001M. So it's their standard model, but in 22 Magnum. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, little lever action, very smooth as all the Henry's are. Uh, I'll go ahead and on the screen right now, I'll put up all of the specifications for this particular rifle. Now, I bought it many years ago because although I do enjoy lever actions in 22 long rifle, the 22 Magnum is just a little more versatile, especially if you plan to do a little hunting with it, you know, to shoot some game, uh, some smaller animals and, and some medium game. The 22 Magnum just gives you a lot more knockdown power and distance. Now, on this particular rifle, I ended up putting a loop hold on here. It's a two by seven power. Um, I think it may be a, a quote unquote rim fire. I, I don't remember. I put it on here a long time ago. And uh, right after I put it on, I also put this sling on here. I ended up buying uh, the stud to put on the magazine tube here and one to drill into the uh, stock. Uh, and this uh, this particular strap is a, it's actually a, a strap for an AK-47, but it works perfectly for this rifle. Uh, and I like the way it looks, so uh, I put it on there. Uh, once I got this completed like this, uh, my father-in-law borrowed it uh, at one point, and uh, he pretty much kept it ever since then. So I borrowed it back to do this video, uh, just to shoot a few different types of am ammunition through it. I just wanted to see if it likes one of these more than any others. We have different weights. Uh, going on here try to get some of the more popular rounds so we have uh let's see here the cci maxi mag this is the uh, hollow point it is a 40 grain we have the 30 grain hornady v max this is very popular 22 magnum it does great out of some of my other rifles uh remington 40 grain uh, let's see here, this is also a uh, polymer tip VMAX, but it's a Winchester, so it's also the 30 grain. We got here some Norma 22, this is a 40 grain, and the heaviest one we have here is the Federal, this is the 50 grain small game. So I want to see how this does with the 50 grain ammo. So what I've done is I've put a target out there, uh, it's at 50 yards, and what I'm going to do is try to chronograph these ammunitions. Unfortunately, I forgot the little covers that uh, go on top of my chronograph. It's supposed to keep the sunlight out, so that may cause some problems. If it does, I'll just edit this part of the video out. But I'm hoping, uh, I figure I'll do uh, maybe five rounds of each. And if we're able to chrono maybe at least three of those five rounds for each ammunition, at least we'll get some sort of uh, idea as to the performance from these different ammunitions. But anyway, let me go ahead and set up, get everything ready, and we can start shooting. We're going to start with the uh, Remington. It is a 40 grain jacketed hollow point. Now, there is a little breeze, it's gusting a bit, uh, but not too bad. I may take uh, little breaks between the gusts to let the wind die down so you may see a jump cut or, or two that's really just me editing out parts of the video where i'm sitting there waiting for the wind to die so you're not having a stroke well you might be having a stroke but it's not due to the jump cuts you're, you're actually seeing that <laughs> anyway i got five rounds in the magazine let's go ahead and we're going to shoot at the top left target Ooh. 1918 quite high I may have to adjust the sights but I'll do it after I finish shooting Nineteen 
1939. 1917. And this is five. 1967. Okay, that's five. Let's go ahead. I'm not going to bother taking a look at the uh, at the target until we're done shooting everything. I am going to lower the sight a little bit. My father-in-law obviously monkeyed with this for <laughs> for his purposes, and now I got to monkey it for mine. So let me let me move the sight down just a little bit. And now we are moving on to the Winchester. This is the polymer tip. V Max, it is a 30 grain. So I expect this one's gonna hit a little lower anyway. I still lowered the scope, well, the sight, the point of impact a little bit. Let's see where it hits. We're gonna shoot at the bottom left target. Twenty It's a bit of a breeze, so let me wait for it to die down. 2,173. 2 uh, it didn't register that last one. 2,161. Oh, it did. Okay, just took a second. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to readjust my uh, my chronograph a little bit, uh, and then we'll start up with the next ammunition. And now I've given my uh, rifle some time to cool off, and our next one is going to be the Hornady 30 grain VMAX. I figured we'll stick with the 30 grain for now. I'm going to shoot at the center top target. 2,170. It's not shooting this one very well. Surprised since most of my other 22 Magnums love this ammunition. 2,163. Well, maybe it was just that first round. 2,113. Okay. The wind's picking up. 2,111. Okay, may have just been that first round. I didn't feel like I pulled that shot. There was a little bit more of a breeze at that time, but this is 50 yards. I can't imagine it would have drifted that much because it wasn't blowing hard. But uh, let me go ahead, let the rifle cool off a little bit, and we'll move on to uh, maybe one of the CCI loadings. And now we continue with the CCI Maxi Mag. This is the 40 grain hollow point. Let's see how this rifle likes the Maxi Mag. 1741 1802 1695 Well, there's that wind. I put new covers on my GoPro to see if it takes out the wind noise. We'll see if that works or not. 1756. 1853. Well, that's five. Although I loaded six, I thought I did, and I did. So, yeah, let's shoot six. What the hell? 
Ooh, that would shut now. Okay. Just to do something different, I'm going to shoot the 50 grain next. Also because I'm not sure where it's going to hit. It may hit low. So I'm going to shoot it at the top right target. But let me go ahead and get everything set up. Next up will be the Federal 50 grain. This is a jacketed hollow point. Meant for small game. I'm curious how it does out of this rifle. Uh, you don't have many 50 grain offerings in 22 Magnum. So it's kind of nice to have a heavier projectile uh, for certain hunting applications. But let's see how it does out of the Henry lever action. Okay, it didn't register. I'm gonna move my uh, chronograph over just a little bit. Okay, hopefully that'll do it. I'm gonna load in one more round. Not because I necessarily want to fire six, but I'd like to chrono five rounds out of this if possible. Uh, just because, like I said, I'm really curious about this 50 grain. I hope it does well, because that is something that would uh, would actually be beneficial out of the 22 Magnum. So let's see here. I moved far enough to get it over my chronograph. One thousand four hundred thirty-nine. There you go. It is significantly slower than the other offerings. And even with the seven power scope, it's only 50 yards. I can see it's hitting really, really low. So you'd have to sight it in specifically. Well, with any 22, 22 Magnum, you gotta, you have to sight your rifle in for that particular ammunition. I mean, you can see how all the other ones, even those uh, similar weights don't necessarily hit in the same spot. One thousand four hundred fifty-five. I'm not sure where that hit. If it hits in the white, I really can't see it. So, let's shoot another one. Oh, here comes the wind. One thousand three hundred seventy-five. One thousand four hundred eighty-one. Ooh. One thousand four hundred forty-three. It looks like I'm making one ragged hole. You know, and the trigger on this is pretty good. I, I, obviously, this rifle has seen a lot of rounds. I mean, when I say a lot, it's probably seen. I, I would assume by this point, it's getting close to a thousand rounds, if not over a thousand rounds. So the trigger is smoothing out. Uh, before I end the video, I'll use my Wheeler trigger gauge just to measure it and see what kind of uh, what kind of pounds I'm getting off of this. Anyway, let's set up the last ammunition. And our final test will be with the Norma 40 grain jacketed hollow point. Let's see how this one does. And we're shooting at the last target, which will be the bottom right target. 1910. Oh, that wind. I think it's getting worse. It's taking longer for me to uh, sit here and wait for the wind to calm down between shots. But I am a patient man, so I will wait as long as it takes. Gives time for the barrel to cool off anyway. 1927. I don't know if you can hear that. This whole time I've been out here, I've been hearing shots all around me. It is hunting season, and uh, the game we're moving today, as I drove in, I, I spooked a bunch of whitetail that were already up moving around. So they're moving. 1899. Well, that one hit point of aim, but the other two shots didn't. Let's see here. 1925. Guess that last one was a flyer. And the final shot of the test. 1914. Also hit point of aim. Interesting. Well, let's go get our target and see how we did. 
and here we are with our target but before we get into the target let me go ahead and uh, test the trigger on this guy so i've got a snap cap um, it's always recommended you do not dry fire any rim fires i know there are some out there on the market you can but i just think it's good practice to avoid it so let's see what kind of a trigger pull we get three pounds 3.1 ounces that's pretty good let's do it three times three pounds 7.2 ounces and one more trying to make sure i'm pulling it even pressure two pounds 15 ounces 15.7 so pretty good, a pretty good trigger overall. Um, it felt good as I used it. And obviously at 50 yards, it's a good enough trigger to get you some decent accuracy. So let me head around this side so you're not seeing my shadow. So how did we do? Well, you know, not bad at all. Um, surprising results were the Federal. The Federal did really, really well. Um, the other surprising result was that the Hornady did not. <laughs> As I've said, my CZ really likes the Hornady, so does my Savage rifle, uh, and they did not like the Federal. So it may be a twist rate. Uh, when I put up the info on this rifle, hopefully I put the twist rate up. If not, this is a reminder to myself to go ahead and do that. Uh, so it may be a twist rate issue. Um, but all in all, let's see here. Let me move this back a little bit. Oh. There we go. We should be able to see all the different targets now. So we started with the Remington, and the Remington, you know, not bad. It did a, a good little group there, uh, uh, relatively tight. It's it's over an inch, but not a whole lot. You know, maybe closer to an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, uh, but a good little group. So uh, not bad for the 40 grain. Uh, the Winchester uh, VMAX, the polymer tip, uh, it did really, really well. I mean, basically one ragged hole there, if you can see. Um, and gosh uh, i only see three hits there so this may be a double hit up here and uh obviously i'm putting yes or no right now on the screen because i've gone back and taken a look at uh the shooting uh well the camera i have down there on the target now the v max uh as far as the the hornady uh, not great i mean we're looking at a two inch group there uh four of them were nice and tight but this one flyer and I didn't feel that I pulled any of these shots. And I really did try to wait between any windy moments uh, to take shots off. So even these four aren't terribly tight, but they aren't bad. Uh, but that flyer there makes it a two inch group. Um, as well as the CCI, the CCI, not that great either. You're looking at a, a two inch group. They're all pretty spread out. It was the one hitting mostly, uh, well, the closest to a point of aim um but it wasn't grouping very well and i mean once again that's a lesson uh, i mean this one is a 40 grain this was the remington 40 grain uh this is the cci 40 grain look at the difference in the point of impact both i'm obviously always aiming at the center here we're hitting almost two inches high and a half inch to the right this one we were hitting almost dead on maybe slightly low and maybe a half inch to the left so you know you really have to find the ammunition your particular rifle likes and sight it in for that particular <laughs> ammunition uh, because if you think well it's the same grain or the same uh, manufacturer no trust me it will not work and that takes us to our final two loadings which was the uh, norma and the federal uh, the Norma did not do that well. Um, strangely, it, it seemed to group twice in two different spots. You had a good little group here of three and a little group here of two. Once again, I didn't feel like I pulled the shots. Uh, it just seems that uh, two of the shots like to hit here and two of the shots like to hit here. So uh, take that for what it is. Uh, you know, I like Norma and some of their other offerings, but uh, even my other rifles didn't seem to like this 22 Magnum very much. They may need to work on their bullet styles or something. Uh, but we'll end with the uh, one that did the best, which was the Federal 50 grain. Look at that. I mean, one ragged hole. Oh, sorry about that. I'll go ahead and fold the target. 
one ragged hole other than this one that hit down here. And if I remember correctly, I shot six shots out of this one uh, just because, yes, I did, uh, because the first one didn't register and I really wanted to see what the speeds were like. It is a slower round because it is a heavier round, uh, but 50 grains gives you a little more versatility of you are trying to use your 22 magnum to to hunt certain types of game and uh and that this type of lever action that's usually what you're trying to do uh this isn't necessarily a bench rest rifle this is a rifle that you take with you in your truck or your atv uh you have handy and that you can really shoot a lot of different stuff with it so uh i may need to get my hands on more of this 50 grain well i say that my father-in-law has taken this from me so you know maybe maybe for as a christmas gift i'll buy him a few boxes of this and tell them to cite it in for that particular ammo. Uh, but that that's amazing because uh, once again, my, my CZ and my, my Savage, they didn't hate the heavier Federal round, but they didn't love it. And uh, this particular Henry lever action seems to love it quite a bit. So as always, another fun video. I love 22 Magnum. It's uh, one of my favorite cartridges. Uh, very versatile. There's a lot you can do with it. It's fun for planking. It's fun for hunting smaller and medium sized game. And it's a type of round that you can find the lever actions, pump actions, bolt actions. It's just a fun round to shoot. So with that, everyone, I hope you all had a happy new year. I'm praying for everyone. I, I hope you have a prosperous and safe new year. And as always, I will see you in the next video.